Miguel. Hey, I'm Neil Yarbrough. You guys can use this for as long as Diana, you're very kind. Thank you. Stardust. Good to see you. So what's cooking? Well, we wanted to talk, as was promised um, at this first meeting, the employee retirement system, um, about our cases. Uh -huh. um, all of us have tried and tried and tried and tried to negotiate with the bank, <coughs> talk to the bank, and have gotten nowhere. Um, I personally am trying to avoid litigation and try to avoid uh, things going any further. Um, and I, like I'm saying, I just want to, just want to talk. Um, everyone here has their own story. Um, I'll, I'll start with mine. I uh, applied for, I was a Wachovia customer. I had to pick a payment loan. I refinanced it. Ed, and they gave me an 8.25% loan. I got sick with an um, antibiotic resistant sinus infection, was hospitalized, and then had surgery that didn't go well. Um, I had kept in touch with Wachovia and then Wells Fargo, calling them almost every week to let them know this is what was going on with me. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and then I wasn't just flaking out. Sure. Even before I, I couldn't make payments anymore, I let I, I called them for several months. Um, when I ran out of my savings, um, I couldn't make payments anymore. I had started to apply for a series of mortgage modifications, and Wachovia lost the documents again and again and again and again and again and again and again. Um, fax confirmations didn't seem to matter to them. I filed a complaint with Diane Feinstein's office after they lost my Social Security disability statement three times in a month. It was just ridiculous. Um, that got forwarded to the Office of the Comptroller of Currency. Uh, during that time, there was a transition between banks. Mm -hmm. uh, at one point, after the complaint with Diane Feinstein's office, the Office of the President of Wells Fargo Mortgage sent me a FedEx requiring me to fax them well over 100 pages of documents within three days. They gave me a fax number that was missing a digit. So I had no clue where to fax it. I spent part of that three days on the West, in the West Portal office with one of the officers there trying to find out who to fax this stuff to. I stayed up all night faxing stuff to them. and. and getting documents for them. They wanted documents from me, my brother who I live with, and um, the renter we had. They just, my brother wasn't around. The renter just happened to be there. Um, staying up all night, literally wearing out a fax machine and having to replace it, literally put me in the emergency room. I was livid. I had done all of this stuff, gone, I just, to my physical limit. Faxing documents. Okay. Um, I got a response saying that I was turned down for the modification, but no confirmation of what they had. So Did I they say why you were turned down? For excessive um, uh, financial obligations. I don't have any credit cards. The only loan I had was the mortgage, mm -hmm. period. And that was it. Um, at that point, I decided I called HUD and said, because um, you know, I felt like it was fraud, quite honestly, and they referred me to a HUD certified counselor. She and I, uh, I sent her documents, she sent them to the bank. She and I had several conversations with the, uh, the call center. And at, then, <clears throat> while that was being processed, I heard that Wells Fargo was having a home preservation event, and I went to it. And I talked to Justin Palmer Saavedra. Uh, Justin was really great, and I really appreciated his interest and his his candor. Just which, which one was this one? This was the one at a it was at a church um, near Bayshore. Okay. Yeah, uh, it was December eighth, two thousand eleven, I believe. Okay. Um, I handed him some documents, and he faxed them to the bank. 
after that, at his suggestion, I worked with consumer credit counseling type certified counselors. Sure. Yeah. They were great. Downtown. Yeah. yeah, they were great. Um, Faxed them a document. They kept transcripts of everything I sent them. On May, in May of 2012, Wells Fargo sold the house without telling me. The only notice I got was when a realtor knocked on my door and said, did you know your house is going to be sold in an hour? Just, and I didn't believe it because the bank had promised me five times in writing that they would not sell the house while the modification was in progress. Consumer Credit Counseling and I had talked to the trustee who also said they wouldn't sell the house while the, the uh, modification was in progress. Who was the trustee on that? Do you uh, Index. Index. Yeah. Index West. Oh. So they, they owned the loan? They were the trustee for the bank. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, I had done everything. I was not worried about anything, and, and so it came as a total shock to me that the house was going to be sold. Mm -hmm. um, afterwards, I complained to the Office of the Comptroller of Currency again. Um, the call center said that they hadn't heard anything from me in seven, something like seven months, which was just completely untrue. Just totally, completely untrue. Because I had the transcripts of all of the uh, documents that had been filed. And there were witnesses that those documents had been filed. Um, then later on, I complained to various other federal agencies, and one of the, the one of many things that they said that just were completely untrue was that they called me and told me, and they made four calls to me. Um, on my Verizon contract, I pay for all calls, incoming and outgoing. Incoming calls, I am charged as soon as it connects to the Verizon network, whether or not the phone rings. Mm -hmm. So if it doesn't appear on my bill, it didn't happen. The calls didn't happen. The only call was one less, less than a minute, and there was no phone messages, because I have software that backs up all of my phone messages. I have years of phone messages um, backed up. There was, and I couldn't figure out why I reminded one of the officers, the bank officers, it is a federal crime to tell a lie to a federal official. This is serious business. Why are you, why do you keep saying this? This is, this is more serious than my mortgage by far. And he said, said no, no, that, that's, what we're, that's our stance. I couldn't believe it. I just, I couldn't believe it. And in complaining to Jackie Spear and Nancy Pelosi in the office of um, Consumer Financial Protection Bureau, each time it's a different story mm -hmm. about what they did and that they didn't get any documents. It's like, come on. Um, at some point, one of the people in the uh, President's office called and offered me $20,000 relocation assistance. I, I refused it quite frankly, because in selling my house without telling me, I lost between a half a million and a million dollars in equity. Um, I'm not making that the value of the house up. It's a, it was an Eichler, four bedrooms in Diamond Heights, level lot, one story house, no steps, with a garage, two courtyards and a backyard in San Francisco. Hmm. It was worth a lot of money. By them selling it without telling me, they wiped out the equity, and that's just gone. That's just gone. Now, your, your case was in the news, right? Yes, okay. yes, yes. And, and the Chronicle article, Wells Fargo, said that they tried really hard to work with me. No, they didn't. No, they didn't. I mean, they just didn't. Um, on top of everything, they sold it to um, a real estate investment group, DMG. One of the people um, pled guilty to felony bid rigging of real estate auctions, um, and his sentencing hearing is in June. And it looks like he's trying to get the house ready to sell, probably to pay his fines. The house was sold to, from Wells Fargo to DMG for 705000 which I always thought was suspiciously low. A very suspicious low, and I couldn't figure out why there weren't other bidders. I can't prove that there was bid rigging, but it just looks mighty fishy, and I'm surprised that the bank took such a low offer for, for that house. Because I spent all of my money fighting Wells Fargo and fighting DMG, I literally have been living in my car. 
last night, someone told me, remind me, the cornerstone of the ADA, because I am disabled, is reasonable accommodations. If Wells Fargo considers my Toyota van reasonable accommodations, that's crazy. The situation that they have put me through has caused all sorts of medical problems for me and all sorts of mental health problems because living in a car is not really good for you. I did every single thing the bank told me to do. Everything. I kept accurate records of everything. There's all of these, all this paper trail of what happened. And the bank keeps going, no, 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 we didn't get it. We didn't, no, 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 we didn't get it. No, 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 we didn't get it. It's like, come on. I mean, I, if I had blown everything on alcohol or drugs or something like that, it would be one thing. I got sick. That's what I did. I got sick. Because of that, I'm living in my car. I mean, because of Wells Fargo's just insane behavior, I'm living in my car. And like I said, I'm trying to avoid litigation. I really am. But I cannot fathom how the bank justifies this behavior. It just doesn't, it just doesn't make any sense. So um, 